In this video, I'll be showing you how I recreate this Apple event design in Adobe XD. Okay, to start, I'm bringing in a screenshot of the original design, the email version. So let's take a minute to dissect the design and understand what the different parts are that we'll be recreating. First, there is a silhouette of dark mountains in the background and probably a gradient as the sky from blue to pink, a little bit of this blur over where water should be, um, kind of like a drop shadow glow here underneath the Apple logo, and then of course some type. I'll make a copy of this artboard by pressing Option on my keyboard as I drag. I'm going to start with the mountain photo first. I downloaded a few different mountain image options from unsplash.com. Those photos are free to download and use. And I played around with a couple of them and ended up settling on this one of snow-capped mountains. But I don't actually want anything else like the background or the foreground. So I'm using the pen tool to draw a shape over the mountains and Essentially, this will be a mask. This step is a little tedious and will take a few minutes, but you don't need to be too exact with your anchor points. I would say just make sure that your shape is more inside of the mountain rather than outside. Otherwise, you will have a weird outline. Once you have connected your shape and it's closed, you can select both the new shape and the photo and press Shift Command M on your keyboard on a Mac, and that will create a mask for the mountains out of the shape we just drew. Now we want to adjust the coloring on the mountains a little bit. Right now there's too much light and detail. We want them to be much more darker like the original design. The way that I decided to achieve this is to draw a rectangle change the color to black, and play around with the blending modes to get it to look a little bit more like the original design. In order to add this black rectangle to just the mountains and not over the background, we'll need to add this into our mask. So first we need to ungroup our mask by pressing shift command G on a Mac keyboard. And now we can select the mountain photo, the black rectangle, and our new shape that we created with the pen tool and press shift command M to create a mask. When you do this, make sure that the shape that we drew with the pen tool is on top in the layers panel. Otherwise it won't correctly mask. I continued to play around with the blending mode settings and I ended up using multiply and changing the opacity to around 75%. I also changed the color from a pure black to a dark black with a hint of purple. This will blend in better with the color palette of the design. And next I'm drawing a rectangle that will go behind the mountains and to the top of the artboard. Remove the border and then click on the swatch next to fill and where it says solid color and this little carrot, click and change to a linear gradient. You'll notice there are two dots for the start and end of the gradient. For the end, we will sample from the pink in the original design and for the first one, we'll sample from the blue. I'll make a copy of this rectangle by pressing shift option and dragging down and then rotating it so the colors are in the opposite direction. Extend the gradient to the bottom of the artboard and then play around with the gradient by adjusting how the color gradates from the top to the bottom. And then I also wanna change the color because the original design actually ends in black. You can add more colors to your gradient by just clicking anywhere on the spectrum and that will create another color that you can adjust. You can change the color and the location of where it is on the gradient. Next, let's add in the Apple logo. Now you can find this anywhere online. Just type in Apple Vector Logo on Google and you will find a free version to download. 
As long as it's an AI or SVG file, you can drag and drop it directly into Adobe XD and then adjust the appearance like I am by removing the gray background and adding in a white stroke. I want to add an inner shadow to the logo, but in order to do that, I need to ungroup the logo because right now these two shapes are joined together by a group and we can't create an inner shadow out of a grouped objects. So we need to ungroup them. Use keyboard shortcut shift command G. Now we can click on one of the shapes. So the larger part of the apple check the box for inner shadow and play around with these adjustments to create the effect that you like. I ended up going with a three pixel white border and for the inner shadow, zero for the X and Y axis, but 45 for the amount of blur. And make sure that the inner shadow is at 100% opacity. Trying to recreate the blue outer glow in Adobe XD turned out to be pretty much impossible. So instead I modified and did something different. I copied the individual shapes of the apple again, and this time I changed the border to a bright blue I sampled from the original, and I played around with the stroke, increasing it and changing it to an outer stroke. At first I played around with the drop shadow and background blur options, but that wasn't giving me the effect that I wanted. So instead I just used the inner shadow again and changed the swatch to the same blue and used pretty much the same numbers as I did for the white shape. Then I just needed to do the same settings for the little leaf shape. You may want to play around with the amount of blur on the inner shadow, but I ended up going with 45 for the main part of the apple and 55 for the leaf. Now let's move on to adding the drop shadow or glow that goes underneath the apple logo. To do this, I drew an ellipse, removed the border, and sampled a color from the original for the fill. In the effects panel, I checked the box for object blur and played around with this to get it to look like the original. I tried adjusting the blue and also the shape of the ellipse just to see how that would affect the blur. Then I copy and pasted this shape on top to create more of that highlight that you see in the original design. I adjusted the fill color to be a little bit lighter and played around with the amount of blur. I had to play around with this quite a bit. I kept adjusting the width of the ellipse, moving it down and just playing around a few little nudges here and there. Next, I'm adding in the type. And for this design mockup, I'm just going to add the main title that says California Streaming. The typeface that Apple uses is SF Pro. And again, you can just Google this type in SF Pro Apple font, and you'll be able to download it for free from the Apple website. I started with the bold version, but that looked a little too thick, and I think what they're using is the semi-bold version of the font. I adjusted the text size to make it the same size and then centered it on the artboard. Then I continued to play around with the drop shadow glow element. I drew another rectangle on top of the foreground element because if you look at the original, you'll notice that the water area is kind of hazy and dark. It's not as bright pink as I have here. So I drew a rectangle on top, unchecked the border, and then under the effects panel, I enabled the background blur effect. You can play around with this, but I ended up going with seven for the blur amount, negative 39 for the brightness, and 25% for opacity. I extended the rectangle to the bottom of the artboard and then changed it from just a solid fill to a linear gradient. But the difference here is that for the second point on the gradient, I'm changing the opacity to 0%. Basically, this means that the gradient will go from white to transparency. 
which is what we want. It will only affect the top of the foreground element here, mostly where the pink is. And then from here, I'm just fine tuning the design. I ended up pulling down the glow element a little bit further so it would be behind the text. And then last, I'm just selecting the Apple logo and pulling it up so that it aligns more like the original design. And we're done. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the original Apple design and my recreation of it. As I mentioned, it's not exactly like the original. It was too difficult to recreate that outer blue glow on the Apple logo. I would have been able to do this in maybe something like Photoshop or Illustrator, but I wanted to challenge myself and do this with Adobe XD. If you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new, you might enjoy watching one of these tutorials next.